Hey everyone, it's Kobe at the Saltwater Edge. Uh, I'm the van stall tech in the back, but once in a while they let me out front for some fun. Um, so today we will be doing some uh, plugology. Uh, names, shapes of plugs, um, sort of the basics intro to um, uh, fishing lures or plugs um, and how they swim, uh, how their shape might affect them, but primarily just the basics. Um, I'm also here with Grizz, uh, a great shop dog. Uh, if you stop by the shop, come give her a pet. Uh, first one, uh, so I'll, I'll work my way th through the water column, uh, starting with the surface, subsurface, uh, deeper, deeper, all the way to a lead bucktail jig at the end. Um, the first one is most people's favorite, especially in the springtime, uh, maybe in the fall, the rebel jumping minnow. Um, I have bone here just because bone is usually a, a, the most popular color. Uh, it's hard to find a color that works better than bone. Um, it's usually what I start with uh, when I'm fishing a spot. Um, so the bone rebel jumping minnow is a surface lure. Um, it'll sort of splash side to side. Uh, some people will call it walking the dog. Um, it, it's small. It doesn't have the surface area of the next one I'll talk about. Um, so it's not throwing a lot of water on the surface. It's sort of uh, gliding back and forth in a zigzag motion, um, which is a very effective motion for um, for fishing. Uh, the, the sort of drives fish crazy. Uh, most of the time, it works better than your average popper. Um, it's a great it's a great little lure for schoolie bass. Um, I will note though the hooks it comes with aren't the best hooks. Um, most people usually swap them out uh, to a sturdier hook. These hooks do bend out really easily. Uh, the Rebel Jumping Minnow might be referred to as a spook style plug, uh, as will this next one, which is the Dock. Um, this is a very, very popular lure. If you don't fish, you may have found one washed up on the beach because they are everywhere. Um, this is the 9-inch version. There's also a 7-inch version, um, though the 9-inch version primarily uh, just tends to work better. Very similar to the Rebel Jumping Minnow. Um, it does that side-to-side -side or walk-the-dog style action um, that is common with all spooks. Um, it is harder to work than a jumping minnow. If you're new to fishing, uh, you have to get that cadence right. It takes a little bit of practice, um, but once you get it going, the fish cannot resist it, especially the big fish. Um, I've seen this plug turn very, very big bass uh, in the middle of the afternoon with the sun out um, in August. They just really can't seem to resist this one. Um, so again, falls into the spook category, top water, um, top water plug. Uh, next up on the top water list is the Cotton Cordell, Cordell Pencil Popper. Um, pencil poppers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, this one's sort of a classic. Um, they can be heavier, they can be lighter. Uh, most are weighted in the tail section. Um, so they sort of sit like this in the water. When you retrieve them, that tail section weighs them down and they sort of flop back and forth on the front end. Um, they throw a lot of water. Uh, they are a, a very productive lure in the popper area. Um, I prefer them over a chug style popper, which is the next one. Um, in calm water, they are harder to use in wavy conditions, which is when I would switch to a super strike popper, um, which casts, all the models cast very, very well. Um, if it's a stormy day out, this is usually one of the first plugs out of my bag. Um, because you can punch it into the wind, they hold well in big water, um, they splash a lot, they get a, a lot of attention, um, and they're an easy plug to work if you are new to fishing. Um, you keep them on the surface, um, you find the retrieve speed that doesn't drag them across the surface, it more pops, um, so you're retrieving at a decent rate, and then you're sort of lifting your rod tip, it's splashing, um, it just sort of goes in a straight line. Um, there are some nuanced ways to fish them um, at night, uh, where you can swim on the surface on a slow retrieve with no splashing, um, but it gets a little more complicated there. Uh, the last plug here in the surface category is a metal lip. Again, there are many different types of metal lips um, based on the body profile. Uh, this one would probably be classified as a Donny. Um, this one in particular swims on the surface. Um, with most metal lips, unlike the poppers where you're putting a lot of action in the tip of your rod, uh, metal lips sort of is a slower retrieve. You're not doing too much action with the rod tip, um, and they're sort of swimming like this on the surface. Uh, some plugs will roll more. Some will have a tail wag. 
Um, it depends on what style. Um, but any plug, uh, I think all made out of wood, I don't think there's any plastic ones out there, uh, with the metal lip or your metal lip swimmer. Um, they don't cast great. Uh, some definitely cast better than others. Um, but yeah, slower retrieve. Every now and then, I personally will give sort of a, a slower tap to my rod tip to get it to sort of roll a little bit um, and impart a bit of erratic action because they, they don't have much erratic action like a spook. Um, so it's sort of a, a twitch there every now and then I think helps. Um, moving down in the water column, the SP Minnow is a very popular lure. Um, they come in different sizes and colors. They work for just about everything. Um, you can put a flag on the end if you just want to use one belly hook. They still swim just fine. Um, I do that on most of mine. Uh, they're a great plug for daytime or nighttime. They've got a very tight um, wiggle, so they'll dive down to that little plastic lip, which is pretty hard to see, but they've got a little plastic lip up front, um, which will dive them under the water, and then they'll have a very tight wiggle as you retrieve. Um, again, an easier plug to work. You don't have to do much of your own action with the rod tip. Um, you can sort of just retrieve that one at different speeds, um, and it swims itself. The next lure uh, is a rubber lure, a paddle tail. Um, these are pretty, pretty popular. Um, this one has a weighted head. It'll sink. Um, the tail, this is why they're called a paddle tail. It looks like a paddle. It moves a lot of water. Um, it gets a lot of vibration going. Um, good when bunker are around. This is the Super Strike Darter. Um, there's loads and loads of different darters out there. Um, darters are a very effective nighttime plug because they have that erratic action, similar to, not identical in any means to a spook, but in a, a similar erratic action where they'll hold um, with this slope and current. And then as you're retrieving it, they'll erratically sort of swing out um, or dart side to side, hence their name, the darter. Um, some do swim more um, than dart. Uh, it's sort of a preference, but I tend to like the ones that dart. Um, I think they are more productive, uh, but a very popular nighttime plug. They cast decent. They're hard to use for a beginner um, because you can't feel too much um, feedback from the plug. Um, it's hard to feel when you're retrieving it, um, and it takes a little bit to, uh, to get that retrieve right. This is the bottle plug, which is a great nighttime, um, daytime storm lure, similar to, a, to the Super Strike Popper here. This one casts really well. You can punch it into a storm. Um, it digs with this big lip um, into big waves and heavy water. It's not going to roll out, um, which means the current sort of overpowers the plug. Um, and You lose its swimming action, and it sort of becomes a wet leaf in the water. This one has a big lip. It's going to dig into that big water. Um, and swim effectively. Um, last season in particular, for whatever reason, the bottle was a very good plug for me. Um, it just sort of depends on the conditions when you use them, but an easier plug to use. Again, you cast it out. Once you start retrieving it, it digs under it like the SP Minnow and does the work for you. Mm. Uh, this is the Needlefish. Uh, needlefish are there's a few different pl profiles, but they all sort of look like a pencil, or not a pencil, but like a pencil you would write with. They're just straight. There's no lip on the front. Um, they'll have various tapers. Uh, the needle fish, they float, they sink slow, they sink fast. Um, again, easier plug to work, but you can't, because it doesn't have that lip um, or too much water resistance, it is a harder thing to feel when you're fishing it. It may not be ideal for beginners. Uh, but you would throw it out there. Um, I usually let mine, I use uh, like a moderate sink. I would let it sink for a little bit, and then I would start to retrieve it. And there's a few different ways you can retrieve it. Most of the time it's very, very slow. Um, and it's sort of moving through the water like this. Um, it doesn't make much sense why they're so effective sometimes, because there's so little movement. Um, but when you're retrieving it, it's sort of just gliding through the water at a slow pace. And then if you drop your rod tip, usually they'll backslide a little bit, which can draw strikes, or um, you can bounce your rod tip to give them just a little bit of a wiggle. Uh, I usually mix it up and try both. Um, but the needlefish is a very, very effective plug. You can use it in many different situations. Last on the list is the bucktail. 
Uh, it is the, probably the simplest lure out there. It is very versatile, works well in the day, uh, during the night. You can use it in a storm, you can use it in calm water, in current, uh, ledges, really anywhere. Um, the bucktail is, is very, very good. You do tend to lose them a bit, especially if you're newer to them because they sink fast, you'll snag on rocks, um, but it can be avoidable once you get used to fishing them. Uh, the bucktail, some are tied, this one's a little more sparse, um, some are tied with a lot more hair, which can slow the sinking, even if the weight is greater. Um, the bucktail, usually, if you're fishing channels um, with muddy bottoms, uh, you can get away with a little more. Uh, you would cast it out there, let it sink, and then I sort of bounce it through the water column as I'm retrieving it. So it's doing sort of this sort of action. Um, if it's in current, you know, you're drifting it, and it's sort of a bait fish going through. They get deep, which is usually where the big fish are, um, which is why they can be so productive for big fish. Um, there are, again, different ways you can fish them, uh, but a very versatile lure. Um, just so many ways you can fish them. So many big fish have been caught on bucktails. Uh, if you're bored in the winter, they're a fun thing to make yourself. Uh, it is literally just bucktail hair, a lead head, and a big hook. Uh, so to sum up the lineup, you've got the topwater spooks, uh, the side-to-side -side walk the dog motion. You've got the topwater pencil popper, um, sort of sits butt in, goes back and forth. You've got your chug style popper, uh, casts really well, easy to work. You've got your topwater metal lip, um, big metal lip on the front, wags on the surface. The SP minnow, um, easy retrieve, dies down, not too deep. Um, wiggles back and forth. You've got your rubber paddle tail. You've got your super strike darter, dart side to side. You've got your bottle. Um, you've got your needle fish. And then you've got that bucktail. Thanks for watching. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. Uh, like and subscribe. Make sure you're uh, following the Saltwater Edge YouTube channel. We've got some good stuff coming uh, and it's a nice way to get through the winter.